Hey everybody and welcome to this week's episode of In Pursuit of a Parlay Season 2, Episode 6. And I am excited to get at this one. Typically, we start in the world of the National Football League, but I think there's a college lock this week that I want to hit on first. And if you're looking at the screen, you can see I'm talking about this USC Oregon State game. We're showing USC is going to win this one about 71.1% of the time. This team has been unbelievable. They have been incredibly dominant this season under new head coach Lincoln Riley. Caleb Williams, 874 yards through three games. USC 3-0, first place in the Pac-12. And Jordan Addison, who came over from Pitt after winning the Blitnikoff last year as the best wide receiver in college football, is averaging almost 100 yards receiving a game, 18 catches, five touchdowns through three. And USC hasn't played no one. You know, they they got Fresno State, who is an adequate football team. They played Stanford, admittedly. Big win over Rice last week, 66-14. to On the other side, the Beavs are 3-0. Second place in the Pac-12, though tied with USC, both 3-0. Chan, uh, excuse me, Chance Nolan's their quarterback, who's looked fairly good this year. Seven touchdowns and 746 yards through three. The offense really goes through the running back, Deshaun Fenwick. 38 carries, three scores through three games. We're showing the USC is going to cover this line about 78% of the time. I actually, you know... We're not going to dig into it too much because it messes with things, but I think there's an alternate line opportunity here, and I also think that there's an over-under opportunity here. USC is averaging 520 yards a game. The Beavs, 468. USC is scoring 50 points a game through three. The Beavs, 45. Over-under, 71. These two teams combined to score 95 right now. Now both have middle-of-the-pack defenses. Slightly better than middle-of-the-pack defenses, to be fair. But I don't know that that's going to shave 20 points off of this. So, we're going to double dip here. We're going to go USC minus the 6, which is minus 101 at BovadaSportsbook.com. And we're also going to go over here. The over is 71 at Bovada. And I love this. I absolutely love this play. It feels like a lock. It really does. This is this. I would say this is my lock of the week here. For whatever reason, that didn't go on, and we don't want the under. We want the over. So just in this game, USC cover plus the over at 71. Our parlay two picks in plus 264. Positive money. And we've got some, we've got an, I know, at least one underdog. We're going to go money line this week when we turn our attention to the NFL. Could be looking at a good number, although I'm trying to play it pretty safe. That's the weather. Here is the NFL schedule. The first game we're going to look at is the Baltimore Ravens at the New England Patriots. And right now on Bavada, that line is a, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty good one. It's a pretty good one. I'm not going to argue with any of that. I don't hate it. Uh, I think this is a fairly even matchup in an interesting game. Ravens minus three on the road. They're certainly better. We're showing the Ravens are going to win this one about 56% of the time. So the the issue with Baltimore is that Ronnie Stanley is going to be out again. Patrick McCarry is going to make a second straight start for for the Ravens. Ravens one and one, second place in the AFC North. The Patriots, they just don't look right. Damian Harris, their leading rusher, 119 yards through two. Uh, by the way, the Patriots also one and one. Patriots in third place in the AFC East. Leading receivers, Jacoby Myers, 150. Who had Jacoby Myers as the, <laughs> the leading receiver for this team going into the year? Mac Jones has been game managey. Mac, 120, or, pardon me, 222 yards passing, which is middle of the NFL. Good defense, though. Uh, only giving up 17 points a game, which is 8th best in the league. We're showing the Ravens are going to cover this one about 69% of the time. And I'm not here to argue with that. I'm really not. I also kind of like the under in this one. Uh, we're definitely going to take the Ravens minus 3 to cover, plus 105. Oh, that's interesting. 
positive money. That's real interesting. And because I closed that other one, we, uh, we don't have the college pick right now. So we'll have to get that in just a second. But positive money on, on the Ravens to cover. That is fascinating. Uh, makes you wonder why, it's, if it's one of those things that seems a little bit too good to be true. Huge lines this week, by the way. Huge lines this week for a lot of these games. And we have to uh, we have to come back down here. Did we miss this USC game? There's Oregon. There's Texas A&M. Anybody who's watching in the chat, feel free to chime in and tell me I'm being an idiot missing this game. There we are. USC minus the six and the over. Parlay three picks in, and and that's an if we're done type situation because. Quite frankly, I don't know if we are. I really like the under in this one. So do we do it? Do we do we make this play here? Can we find the NFL ske- you know, schedule? All great questions. Technical difficulties here on on episode 6. Yeah, why why the heck not? Let's do it. These two teams are only averaging 43 points a game. Both have the Patriots a good defense. The Ravens defense should be good, though there's some questions in that secondary. We're going to we're going to go under this. Four picks in, kids. Plus 13 26 at Bavada. This is a this is going to be a money-making day for us. And let's keep going. Our next game is going to be the Cincinnati Bengals at New York to take on the Jets right here. I think this is the the actual get-right game for the Bengals. We're showing they win this one outright about 77% of the time. Jets have a, quite a few people who are questionable on that offense. No major injuries uh, for, for the Bengals at this point. Though, you have to worry about how quarterback Joe Burrow is feeling after getting sacked about 800 times so far. Bengals 0-2, fourth place in the... AFC North. I thought there'd be a Super Bowl hangover. I didn't think it was going to be this bad. Uh, I also don't think that they're quite as bad as they showed. That offensive line just needs an opportunity to gel. Going to the Jets. One and one, third place in the AFC East. I don't think they're that good. <laughs> On the other hand, I will say the matchup between Ahmad Gardner and, and Jamar Chase is going to be a, a fun one to watch. But, look, the Jets shouldn't have won last week. It came down to a miscommunication in that Brown secondary. Denzel Ward didn't seem to know what coverage they were playing. Gave up that long touchdown to Corey Davis, which changed the changed the game. A million things had to go wrong, and they, and they all did for the Browns to lose that game. We're showing, showing the Jets cover this one about 52% of the time, but this is a go with your gut. You know, let's let's we're look at where we are right now. Let's play it safe, actually. Originally this was gonna be A Bengals cover, minus 115 at Bavada. But I don't think we need it at this point. Uh, We're going to get more picks than I thought. Probably get 10 picks in rather than 8. Let's just go Bengals outright win, minus 260. Five picks in, takes our parlay up to plus 1875 at Bavada. And we are, we're cruising. We're cruising so far. Next game, the Kansas City Chiefs head to Indianapolis to take on the Indianapolis Colts. This is a weird one. Uh, we're showing the Chiefs are only going to win this one about 58, 59% of the time outright. But that doesn't sound right. Uh, sometimes you got to trust your gut, like I say. Chiefs will be without kicker Harrison Butker. But the the Colts will once again be without star linebacker Shaquille Leonard. The Chiefs, man, they're just good. It doesn't matter. They spread the ball around. They That, that offense is incredibly Difficult to stay with because of how willing they are to use everybody on it. Kelsey's their leading receiver with 172 yards through two games. The team's undefeated first place in the AFC West. Colts are 0-1-1, tie against the Texans, who maybe aren't as bad as we thought. But that 0-1-1 is good for second place in the AFC South. Sure. Uh, although they wouldn't have the tiebreaker against Houston, so we'll just call it third place. Matt Ryan, 547 yards. Jonathan Taylor, 215 on the ground through two games. 
I don't think they're as bad as they've shown, but I also don't think they're good. We're showing the Chiefs cover this one 74% of the time, and I tend to agree with that. If this money line was a little bit a little bit lower, a little bit closer to this, I think we would have gone with it, but I do want to... Let's grab it. Chiefs cover, minus 6, minus 105 at Pavada. And now that's going to take our parlay six picks in to plus 37.56. I like it. We're going to head to Tennessee to talk about the Las Vegas Raiders, who are taking on the Tennessee Titans. It's an interesting one. We're showing the Raiders are going to win this one about 57% of the time. Titans are going to be without Bud Dupree and and Taylor Lewan. Uh, Raiders without Hunter Renfro and Denzel Perriman, plus a handful of other guys banged up. The Raiders, 0-2. They're not an 0-2 team. Come on. Fourth place in the AFC West. I'm not worried about this. Carr, 547 yards. Devontae Adams, who struggled last week, 153 yards to the ground. I think this is going to be a big day for Devontae. The Titans, 0-2. Fourth place in the AFC South. They're just not very good. Uh, They (laughs) just... uh, Okay, I can understand the big loss against the Bills, but... The loss to the Giants is a troubling one. They just they just don't look right. And Robert Woods hasn't done as much to replace A.J. Brown as I think people had hoped for. We're showing a 66% chance of a cover here by the Raiders. And, and I don't disagree with that, but I also don't want to get greedy. The minus 115 of the cover isn't that much different than the minus 130 of the outright. So we'll take a little bit of, little bit of a safety net here. And we're going to point these teams don't score points either. But I think the Raiders are capable of scoring points is the problem. These teams only average 34 points a game, which gives us a lot of wiggle room in that 45 and a half. But the Raiders are capable. We're going to go Raiders to win outright. Minus 130 at Bavada. And that is going to take our parlay now. Seven picks in to plus 67.22. This is going to be a big number. This is going to be a big number this week. And I think you're going to see why in just a second here. Now I'm wondering if I'm... Now I'm wondering about... my. Okay, look. Cards on the table. Going to Jacksonville and uh, Los Angeles here. The Jags take on the Chargers. We're showing the Chargers win this one about 76% of the time. Herbert hopes to go. Was the word two days ago. He's questionable. He sat out of practice on Friday. Banged up. Jaguars aren't really missing anything of consequence. Keenan Allen's also banged up. JC Jackson's doubtful. All of the the tarot cards here point to another opportunity for Jacksonville to eke one out. So, the Jaguars, who I've been on all year, as you know, one and one, first place in the AFC South. It's just that's a really, really bad, really bad division. But Trevor Lawrence has taken that step we'd hoped that he would. The numbers don't look quite as good as he's actually been as he's gone up against some really good defenses statistically so far, 510 yards and three scores, but he's going to have a big year. This is going to play out. And also, Christian Kirk has proved to, is he worth the contract he got? He might be. Uh, Or maybe it's a case of they're just, this is a a Terrell Pryor in Cleveland situation where we're just force-feeding him the ball. Wow. He looks good, though. He looks good. For the Chargers, the big question mark is obviously Justin Herbert. The team's 1-1, one one, second place in the AFC West, behind only Kansas City. I don't know that Herbert's going to play. I don't think that Herbert should play. And I think that Logic probably wins out on this one. They, they let him rest because who cares about him being healthy week three? They care about him being healthy at the end of the season and into the playoffs. So... It would be almost, uh, I don't want to say Mike Shanahan with RG3 back in Washington. Risky to be playing Herbert, but not too much short of it, quite frankly. We're showing the Chargers are going to win this, or are going to cover this one 68% of the time. But I don't think Herbert's going to play. I don't think the offense is going to look as good without Ch- without Herbert and uh, with Chase Daniel in the lineup. I also think they'd be more inclined to potentially keep Keenan Allen out another week if Herbert doesn't play. Yeah, we're going to do it again. Jacksonville money line plus 145 at Bovada. 
and boy, we're gonna we're gonna see a jump right there. The parlay now eight picks in up to plus sixteen sixty four. Heck yeah. Our next game, the Los Angeles Rams head to Arizona to take on the Arizona Cardinals right here. Cardinals are getting three and a half points at home. We're showing the Rams win this one about 50% of the time, so it's, it's a coin flip for who wins out, right? I think that's probably about right. The Rams won and won first place in the NFC West. They've been troublesome. They don't have the issue. Darnell Henderson... Uh, Daryl Henderson. I don't know why I've always thought that guy's name was Darnell. I just always call him Darnell ever since uh, he was back at Memphis. But Stafford's been an interception machine so far. Has to cut down on that. He's been force-feeding the ball to Cooper Cup, 236 yards through two games, averaging 12 catches a game. Going to shatter the catch record at this current pace. The Cardinals, they seem to have righted the ship last week against the Raiders that... 85-yard scamper for, what, a two-yard score for for Kyler. The team's 1-1, one one, first place in the NFC West. Kyler looks good. They also don't have a running game. Daryl Williams. Daryl Williams. 59 carries, uh, 59 yards, the leader. And by the way, he has eight carries. Their leading rusher has eight carries on the season. Greg Dortch, their leading receiver, 118 yards. The uh, former... UCLA tight end, or pardon me, Wake Forest. (sighs) Wake Forest wide receiver. Those are different things. It's been a long week. In any case, we're showing that the Rams are going to cover this one about 57% of the time. Again, this money line and and the spread total aren't that different. So we're going to just take the Rams to win outright. Minus 185 at Bovada. And that's gonna, it's gonna do the job we need. That's gonna get us all the way up to plus twenty five six four eight at Bovada. Last pick, last game. We don't need college football filler with how this is going. The San Francisco 49ers head to Denver to take on the Denver Broncos, and man, <clears throat> I would consider. I'm going to give the pick for this game, but I'm just telling you I would consider leaving this one out entirely because I don't feel as good about it. We're showing the 49ers are going to win this one about 51% of the time. Trey Lance out for the season after that injury last week. They go back to Garoppolo. I think they're going to be better, as I've said all week, short-term and long-term because of that. Garoppolo is more ready to win right now than Trey Lance is, and Lance gets another year to develop properly. 49ers 1-1, one one, first place in the NFC West, tied with those Rams. And they've looked fine, uh, but you have to think the offense is going to look considerably different, especially the passing game this week. Denver 1-1, one one, second place in the AFC West. Russell Wilson, 559 yards, two touchdowns through two games. Cortland Sutton, their leading receiver. We are showing 49ers are going to cover this one about 63% of the time. I mean, there's no absolute... I do. I think that's correct. Uh, I think the 49ers are going to win, and I think they're going to cover. We're just going to play it safe. We'll take that extra extra half point there in case this is a close one. Minus 130 at Bavada for the money line. And, uh, yeah. I feel decent about it, but I would also consider maybe leave this one out because I think, I think we're in really good shape up until this point, but that's not... Not the name of this game. We make picks for eight games, and there it is. That takes our parlay up to plus 45, 45, 5. Ten dollars wins you 4.5 grand. A hundred bucks wins you $45,455 at Bavada. All right, everybody. That is, uh, that's it. We finally achieved the goal of keeping this a little bit shorter this week. Uh, if you're... You know, thank you so much for the support. Another big week last week. Please like, rate, review, do all of that good stuff. Whatever platform you're watching, whatever platform you're listening to, we appreciate you. And with that, we'll be back next week to do this again. I've been Chris Horwadell. This has been In Pursuit of a Parlay. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And we will see you next time.